What's going on eaters and feeders? Casey from Fit Food Fresh. And in today's video, I'm gonna be covering one of my favorite pieces of software, Zapier. Now, if you're not familiar with Zapier, you are going to love me. Zapier is easily my favorite piece of software to work with. I just recently learned it, uh, probably within the last year, and I've used it to automate so many things, it's unbelievable. The next best thing to knowing magic or having a time machine because you could seriously save so much time, headache, and frustration by using Zapier and implementing it in creative ways. I would probably be doing Zapier a disservice if I were to try to start listing off the things that you can do with it, but suffice it to say that if you can do it with software, um, especially any kind of cloud-based software or, or website, you can probably automate it with Zapier. In this video, I'm gonna cover just one of the applications that we use Zapier for, but we use it every single day in dozens, actually hundreds of different procedures. And this is actually gonna be a continuation of our last video. Now in the last video, we covered Google Forms. We had a scenario where, like many businesses, we were meeting with our potential customers face-to-face. -face. Maybe it's at an event or a convention and they're coming by our table, they're interested in our product or service, they wanna give us their information, they do so on a clipboard with a pen and paper. Not only is that embarrassingly out of date, but it's something that's easily lost, it might get wet or might just be illegible. Plus, you gotta bring it back to the office, hand type it into the CRM, and it's just extremely antiquated. With Google Forms, I showed you how we can take that information down with an iPad or computer and get it immediately imported into a spreadsheet. Now that we've got the information digitized with Google Forms, I can show you how to automatically import it right into your CRM with Zapier. Why would you wanna do that? You might have a team full of salesmen back at the office waiting to call this prospect while they're interested, while they're remembering your name, while they may be tasting your product and still speaking to one of your representatives. They don't get any hotter than that, and that's the best time to engage with them. So if you can get that immediately and flawlessly into your CRM, I've had instances where their phone rings while I'm still talking with them, and they're already on the phone with a salesman back at the office. If that sounds like something that you could use in your business, I think you're going to thoroughly enjoy this video as well as the many other applications for Zapier. I hope this just whets your palate and makes you interested to dive deeper into Zapier. I'd love to make more videos or help you with it. So if this is something you'd like to see more of, let me know. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy learning about what I know is gonna be the most powerful piece of software in your arsenal. Welcome to our channel where we go behind the scenes of our meal plan company Fit Food Fresh and other local businesses across South Florida. Make sure you hit the subscribe and alerts so you never miss a video and hit us with any questions or suggestions. All right, now we're going to get into Zapier, which is one of my favorite programs. I just uh, learned about it earlier this year. I wish I knew about it um, years ago, but uh, I've been having a lot of fun creating what they call Zaps, and it's basically automated procedures so in this instance hopefully you saw the last video if not you can check that out we were using google forms to take down information from people in the scenario we were using it was uh, information from a live event we were turning them into leads at a convention and um, instead of using a pen and paper we were having them fill out uh, the scenario it was having them fill out a google form that we created in the last video just getting the basic information and as I mentioned in the last video, it's beautiful because now it's digitized. Instead of being on a pad of uh, paper, with some pen and handwriting you gotta try to read, you've got it digitized and it's perfect. And another thing that's great about it, not only being perfectly legible, is you can use a program like Zapier to push it right into your CRM. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. So, um, here we are at the Zapier website. Um, let's look for Google Forms because that's the first program that we're trying to link. Oops, there we go. Google, uh, what's wrong with me today? Google Forms, okay. So basically what you're doing is you're gonna link two pieces of uh, software together or apps. Um, so the first one's gonna be Google Forms. The second one is gonna be our CRM. In this uh, scenario, let's say we're using our HubSpot CRM. 
Now, I've already created a connection between Zapier and my Google account, as well as Zapier and my HubSpot account. So, this is something you'd have to do before going into the Zap, but um, that's something you could figure out yourself. I just want to show you how Zapier works, so then you know it's worth connecting them and playing around with it. So, the trigger is going to be what event happens that makes the Zap turn on. The Zap is basically, Zapier is going to be watching these softwares and waiting for something to happen and that's going to be the trigger we're having it watch google forms right now and the trigger is going to be a new um a new response all right so someone puts in a new response they submit a new form and this is going to happen so now this is connecting to the google form so now it says okay you want us to look at google forms you want us to look for a new response in Google Forms. What Google Form do you want us to look at? What account is it in first? So it's in this account. It's associated to our Fit Food Fresh account, or my Fit Food Fresh account. Now what sheet is it? Well, if you watched the last video, you know the name of the sheet is Test Expo Lead. And then the responses. Um, which worksheet? Now this is ref referring to um, the, if, if you want to think about the uh, spreadsheet that we had, you know how there's going to be several um, tabs. Each one of those tabs can be different events or whatever else and you can get deeper into that when you get deeper into the forms. And if you did have multiple tabs and you're saying, okay, I want to look at this specific tab, you know, tab one, tab two, tab three, your name them based on the dates. That's, this is where you'd be able to select it. Now, if you saw the last video, we only had the one tab that we were working from, so that's why there was only one option for us to select there. But if you're working with multiple tabs, this is something that you want to pay attention to because if you're pointing it at the wrong tab, getting the wrong information or no information at all, none of this is going to work. So we've got it looking at the right Google account, got it looking at the right um, Google form, and now we got it looking at the right tab. And now, if you guys saw the last video, I'm going to keep saying that. Um, I did three different examples, so one should be named, yeah, this is the last one I did where I just mashed my fingers on the keyboard, so the name and phone number don't make any sense. Let's use this one, because this one I think actually made it look kind of real. Okay, so this is what it's going to do, yeah, it's, so this is just an example piece of data that I ran through the form, so now it's basically saying, okay, I know what form I'm looking at, and I know what I'm looking for, um, now let's start playing with some of that data. And what, what are we going to do with this data now that we figured out what the trigger is and where they're looking for the trigger? So now we've got that trigger set up. Now the action is the next part. HubSpot CRM, uh, what's cool about it is you're able to have a combination of actions. Normally you'd have to have two. One would be you'd um, search for an account to see if it already exists and it would search by trying to match the email because that's how CRM is basically, uh, a lot of CRMs commonly, at least with Zapier, they'll use that as the identifier, the, the email. With the assumption being email is going to be an individual thing. People might share a phone number. There might be two John Smiths. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that someone else could have, but odds are you're using one email. You, you're, you may give me your home number, so you and your wife, if I use that as the account identifier and your wife has an account, you have an account, and that's the identifier, it's going to get a little bit confused when two accounts have the same phone number. So we don't use that as the, the identifier, we use the email. So now, normally there'd be two actions. One would be looking for that email in, hubs, in, in the CRM, and the next one would be updating it or doing whatever action that you want to perform. What's cool about HubSpot is HubSpot has their Zap combined, so they basically do a search for it and update it in one. Um, so we're going to connect it. Now we're going to say, what is the action that we're going to perform? Now I could just say create an or update. What's cool about that is normally it would be um, look for, and if they don't find it, then it would create. If they find it, then it, up, it, it updates it. Um, so we're going to be doing that in one, one move right there. So if you are working with another CRM and you're like, wait, in Casey's video, this was the only step and my zap's not working, it's probably because you're not doing a search which I would be, I'm skipping right now because HubSpot doesn't make me do a search. It does it for me. So again, see how this is required right here? 
um, they're using the email as the identifier. So now I have to tell it, look at the form and look at this specific piece of data. And on every one of the forms, this specific piece of data should be the same type of data. When I have you know, the name, it'll always be the lead's name. The email should always be the lead's email. So in all of the forms, the hundreds of forms that you'll have, thousands of forms, whenever it looks at that one box named email, it should expect that's where the email is gonna be. So that's what you're telling it right now, just kinda. Now the rest of these are basically, once it finds the account, if there is an account that matches that email, what fields in that account in HubSpot, in the CRM, do you want to be updated? So let's say in this instance, um, it's a, uh, in, in the last video, we were doing an, an example where you're going, you're collecting lead information. So if we're following that, they probably don't already have a file in our CRM, right? They're a lead we just met at an event. So it's not going to be successful at finding it and updating it. It's gonna to fail to find it because that email shouldn't be in our CRM because this person's a lead and it's gonna then create it. So these are the fields in HubSpot that we're looking at right now. And Zap, uh, the, this Zap is basically asking you, okay, what data do you now want me to put into the CRM as either updating the field, if I found an account that matches that email, or creating a new account, what information am I putting in these fields? So these are all the different fields that we have in our CRM profiles. Now, the I'll, I'll show you right here. Um, Oh, I know this. Okay, so right here, I can look at the Google form data and I could automatically fill that stuff in. Now, I'll, uh, I won't use it on that field, but let's say I do control F to find name, uh, not the name of the event. I want the oh, first name. There we go, first name. For, first name. Now I want that automatically filled out. Oh, look name right here, Casey. Now in our CRM, we have first name and last name. Um, in the video that I did, just for the sake of brevity, I did one name field and I even said, I'm just doing it to show you how the data works. Um, so assuming I had a last name as well, I'd find the last name field and I'd have the drop down, put that in there. I didn't do that, so I'll skip that. Now let's go to email, because I know that's another piece of data that I took when they were a lead at this, uh, Theoretical. Oh, email's already in there. That's right, as the identifier. What else did we get? Oh, we got phone number. So let me find phone number. Let me find the original one. Sorry, I've got so many. There we go, phone number. So now, again, we click over here. We go down to the phone number right there. And now you guys noticed there were some other um, things in there. Let's see, we got timestamp um, right here. That would be interesting, so I know you know when we got this lead or when you spoke, so I could say, oh, Tuesday the 4th. Hey, you were speaking with David at the ABC gym event on Tuesday the 4th around noon, and we were you know looking to follow up. Um, the diet, if you wanted to put that, it, whatever other uh, forms of data that you collected that you have a correlating um, field for it, that's what you'd be selecting here. So. Hopefully you guys get the point. I'm always here. If you didn't, I'd be happy to walk through everything. So let's pretend I filled out all the fields just for the sake of brevity. And um, now we're gonna move forward. Now it's gonna ask us to test this. So this is gonna send a test to HubSpot as if this trigger happened and this action was occurring. So that's what we're doing here, making sure that the data works and it's in the right format. If I was trying to put text format into um, a field in HubSpot. In the last video I went into this as well. Uh, let's say we have, in HubSpot, we have a date field and it's expecting a date format. If I were to just send a random text format like somebody's name or somebody's email, that's not in the broken up date format that the CRM is used to reading, so this would fail. I did this successfully in this one, but if we were to go back through here and I'll show you, um, let's see, maybe this is a date format. Yeah, I think this might be a date format, whatever, I'll put an email in there. Um, what's another one I might have as a date format? So like this one, this one I know is a date format. So if I were to put email in there, let's watch what happens. 
Oh, okay, it took it, but there's going to be an issue on the uh, CRM side because it's going to fill in. Uh, I'm not going to bother looking through it, but it looks like Zap didn't have the issue. That's right. Zap would have the issue if it couldn't find or couldn't put it in there. HubSpot will have the issue. Um, so sorry about that. I'll just cut that out. So we got the successful thing. Okay. So then the next step. So once we have a successful test, which you'll see with the uh, green up here, it'll let you finish. And now we can name this, and this will be event form spot lead creation. I don't really have a rhyme or reason to my app names and then you gotta turn it on that's the other thing that's most important is you got to make sure that the zap is on then you can go through and test it so let's go to our what's going on here let's go to our Google form so this is the one that we just set up let's go to the test view of it and we're gonna do um, let's just do Tester test one two three one two three one two three four and then the email we'll do testing at testing dot com okay this stuff wasn't necessary but this is the form that I created in the last video uh, okay so we just submitted a response so now we'll be able to go into the task history for this app which tells you what's gone through. And Zap will normally run about every 15 minutes or so. Um, sometimes, sometimes it'll run a bit faster, but you'll see, um, again, another thing that you'll see in the, uh, the last video, here's the data that went through, that's already digitized. Now this will automatically pull, let's see the Zap, sorry, task history, let's see if it's come through yet. So I'll just wait till that comes through. All right, and through the magic of television, we just went 15 minutes and uh, the zaps have gone through. So these are, you can actually go through and look at the data that went through them. So this is data in, data out. So this is the uh, tester test, timestamp, date stamp, as you can see, the phone number, and uh, the email testing at testing.com. So this successfully went through and then over here you see that it is creating a um, here's all the fields in the CRM that were filled out uh, just automatically. So yeah that's how you uh, now easily throw away your clipboard. If you're watching the last video throw that clipboard away now go to the events like a professional. You can use this to automatically put people's answers to polls into their CRM um, or surveys or help them build out the CRM uh, as I just uh, showed you here. Hopefully you guys found that useful. As always, comments, critiques, subscribe, like, and uh, catch you on the next one.